Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and in this video, we're gonna be adding fish to the pond and doing some other maintenance. Now, we had a pretty severe drought last summer, and the water level got so low, I thought we had probably lost most of our fish, but boy, was I wrong. So this past Sunday, my wife and my kids and my grandkids were all out here fishing, and you could pretty much catch a small perch or sunfish or bluegill on every cast. Well, something just jumped right there. And I decided that I had an overpopulation problem because everything we were catching was pretty small. And I actually went on and I ordered some fish and those are gonna be delivered tomorrow. And you're gonna see those fish go into the pond today. And what I wanted was some bigger predator fish to thin this population down. And I really thought that's what the case was till later in the day, my son-in-law caught the biggest perch that I've ever personally seen. And I'll show you some pictures and video of all these fish as we go along. But I was pretty impressed that this, this perch was like 14 inches long. And I was surprised by that. But then towards the end of the night, my daughter caught something and she said, I think I snagged a turtle because I can't reel it in. And we started walking around the pond to help her. And then I saw the line go sideways and I said, that's no turtle. So thinking, you know, we, she's got a big bass or something. Well, as we're walking over, we see her fishing pole snap in half and go out into the water, but it didn't break the line somehow. So my son-in-law jumped in the water and grabbed the piece of pole and grabbed the line and was pulling it in. And he got a catfish that was probably 15 pounds at least. He got it right up to the bank and then the line snapped and we all got a good look at it before it swam away. So there is at least one monster catfish in here. But we are gonna go ahead and add some more fish to it. I specifically already knew no matter what else was in here, I was gonna add some grass carp to help with the moss and the lily pads and stuff. So I ordered some, some carp and some other fish and we'll show you those later in the video. But right now I'm gonna do something that I do once a year, which is dye my pond blue. This bottle cost about $40. I've used like five different brands and it serves two purposes. One, I think the pond looks fantastic when it's that nice bright blue. But second, the dye and the color in the water blocks a lot of the sunlight from getting to the bottom, which helps slow down having an overgrowth of vegetation that you don't necessarily want in there. So right now I'm gonna go around and treat this. And then after that, we'll get to the fish stocking. This is some pretty potent stuff. I just got a little bit on my finger as I was opening the bottle. But before anyone asks, I'll go ahead and just let you know, this is completely safe for fish and deer and any other wildlife that comes down to the pond. It's basically food coloring is all this is. And they say you can even drink water that's been treated with this if you wait a certain period of time. You also might have noticed we got the aerator reconnected to this side, which runs off the electric aerator. And of course, the other half of the pond runs off the windmill aerator. Guess I might as well take the pond around the banks and show you how everything's shaping up. If we could get a little bit of breeze, that windmill would spin and the aerators would go and it would all circulate around quicker. I was gonna show you guys a snake over here cause I just saw one, but it disappeared like right in front of me. I don't know, it's a little bitty snake. I don't know where that sucker went. Like sure you can see that I need to mow here, but I'm just excited that I can mow here. I've already mowed this twice this year. It needs done again. When I started working on the pond, this side was only about two and a half, three foot wide, and we've widened it out to eight feet.
In my experience, this dye circulates pretty quickly. So I'll see you in just a minute. We'll have some fish to put in here and hopefully the whole pond is a nice blue shade. All right, guys, I just got back from the fish farm and I've got 25 catfish in this bag, four grass carp in this bag, and 25 bass in another bag. Here are the grass carp. And we gotta get started acclimating them because it was already over a 30 minute ride back. And the longer they're in the bags, the less likely they are to pull through. Also the bigger fish have kind of a rough ride, but they're also a little bit hardier than the little ones. These grass carp say six to eight inches. I'm just going to start scooping pond water into the bag a little at a time. All right, I added a few pretty good sized scoops of pond water in there. In my pond, fish are able to swim from the small side to the big side. It's all connected, but it's shallow where it connects. So I think some fish may get a little protection from being on this side, because we've got the big catfish on this side. Maybe these smaller catfish won't get eaten if we keep them over there. And this side where I'm going to put the smaller catfish is where we have the breeding, the stump, where all the, the baby fish are at. So temperature acclimation should already have happened. They're still kicking around pretty good. I think this is going to go all right with these. I can barely pick that bag up. I'm going to let the grass carp go. Okay, time to start acclimating the catfish now. And these are 100% coming on the small side because there's a there's a catfish on the other side that could swallow these in one gulp. Is that a little bass? They're trying to catch that big catfish while I'm doing this. So what I've been doing, I've been putting two scoops of water in, wait about two minutes, then put a couple more scoops of water in till the bag's full. Well, that one's pretty big. Most of them are small, but there's a good size one in there. None of these fish are floating, so I think they might have made it. Now we got a fish on the hook over here. I've got a pretty good sized catfish on the hook right now, but I don't think it's the same one that we almost caught the day before. That one was bigger. I just snagged that big catfish and jumped in after him. Up to my waist. 
I got my hand on him. I couldn't get to his mouth. <laughs> that was pretty good. <sighs> Can't win them all, I guess. Hopefully that footage, I got some footage of that big catfish. <laughs>